We are ready. Where's my moderator? Is my moderator ready? Thank you for participating today. We are now joined by Marcus Garrett and we'll begin the press conference. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Our first question is from Bay Gregorian from the Kansas City Star. Hey, Marcus, Fahey Gregorian from the Kansas City Star. Could you just uh, describe um, when you guys felt the game was turning your way and what this atmosphere was like as an NCAA tournament game? Oh, it was a great as atmosphere out there. Um, I felt like the game kind of turned, um, I'd probably say when the clock was messing up. Um, when the clock was messing up and the game was just paused for a second, I feel like we locked in there, and that's when the game kind of turned around. Our next question is from Billy Witz from the New York Times. Yeah, Marcus, hi. Uh, you know, can you describe what it was like, I guess, to see David uh, arrive yesterday and be able to practice and kind of what his presence, not just his presence, but the way he played, what that meant? Oh, uh, he got to be able to win to. His presence means a lot to us. Um, I think he's been our leading scorer down the stretch in conference, and um, he's really picked it up offensively. So, I mean, getting our big man back was definitely huge for us. And, and yesterday, we were definitely trying to get him, get his reps back and get his legs back under him. Did you, were you confident that he'd be able to do that? I mean, for being out for a week or so? Oh uh, yeah, I mean he's kind of yeah. When you when you think about it, he's played basketball his whole life. So I mean, I think him taking ten days off wouldn't take away what he does on the basketball court. It'd just be more fatigue. I would I would say. Okay, thank you. Our next question is from Scott Chasen from Kansas twenty four seven sports dot com. Hey Marcus, how's it going? Great. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Hey, wanted to ask you about uh, Dewan, the spark he gave you guys today. Can you speak to his performance and just how he wasn't phased uh, coming in and playing on the NCAA tournament stage? Um, he played great. Um, he came out there. He did what Dewan does, and he took the shots that was open and he knocked them down. Uh, I feel like he played a great game. He gave us the boost we needed, and he was plus twenty two, which is great. So, I mean, I, I feel yeah. like he played great. Not a guy who takes a lot of threes, uh, but he's made quite a few of them. What do you think about his confidence just shooting the ball? Uh, I feel like he has confidence in shooting the ball. I mean, he just doesn't take them all the time because that's kind of not what he does for our team. But I feel like whenever he does take them, it, he has a chance to knock them down. Reminder to the media, please check your settings to be sure you are identified by name and affiliation. You will only be called on if you are properly identified. Our next question is from Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Hey, Marcus, uh, they left a little bit today. It seemed like you were comfortable taking that outside shot, uh, especially the third one here from the corner. You, you kind of bounced on your way back. Uh, how big was your shot today for, for what you guys needed? Um, I, I mean, the atmosphere had me kind of like feeling good. Um, I feel like I was open there. I had to take those shots, and I was just able to knock them down. I also wonder when Dave was out there, we did see him, you know, on that end one at the free throw line. He, he kind of celebrated like we've seen him do all year. What was he like out there? I mean, did he save his energy or did he bring it? Or, or the he huddle, how was he? I mean, yeah, he definitely brought his energy from the time he arrived yesterday. Uh, we felt his energy. We felt his presence. He was just happy to be with us and he was happy to be back on the court. How tough a matchup for those guys? Oh, definitely a tough matchup. That's a great team. Uh, the way they moved the ball, the way they shot the ball, and I feel like the way they spread the floor was, was great, and it was a hard matchup. Our next question is from Adam Rittenberg from ESPN. Yeah, Marcus, another one about David. I mean, you know, I know that they were they were saying he might not even uh, play a ton today, but for him to actually exceed his, his minutes average of the season in a game where the other team big man it's kind of going off how, how significant was that just as a teammate to watch him oh uh, that was definitely incredible um knowing that he hadn't practiced or did anything in the last 10 10 11 days and for him to come out and just be so productive on the offensive end that was definitely something great to see next question is from john title from hoopshd.com 
Hey, Marcus. John Titel from HoopsHD.com. Uh, I wanted to ask about your three-point shooting. I believe you only made two threes during the entire month of February, but you've now made seven in your last three games in March. So is it something that they need you to make them more, or have your, has your confidence built more? Or what's up with your three-point shooting? Uh, it's March. Uh, I know it's winning time. Uh, I know I have to knock down shots. I'm um, stepping up and having confidence and shooting the ball more. Our next question is from Sam Mellinger from the Kansas City Star. Hey, Marcus. Um, even when you guys were down um, in the first half and into the second half, it, there didn't seem to be any panic from you guys. I'm just wondering, what was it? Is it something internal, your belief in yourself? Was it something you saw in the strategy of the game? What, what made you guys appear to be at least confident throughout? Uh, Coach Self, he's telling us every time uh, it's a long game, um, just stay with it. Uh, keep chipping away at the league, and, and we'll get it where we want it. Our next question is from John Zener from the Associated Press. Oh, yeah, hey, Marcus. Could you talk about, I know it's hard to look ahead this quick, but have you seen USC, right? Uh, and got any kind of preference on, on matchups? Um, no, I kind of don't have a preference. Um, I've watched film on both teams already, and whichever team wins, I feel like Coach Self will have us ready for them. Thank you. Our next question is from Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Marcus, at halftime, what, what was the focus? What were you guys thinking? Uh, you know, you had the rough start, obviously, but then you were down eight after you kind of calmed down, too. Uh, what was your mindset coming out of half to, or the second half? Uh, stay calm. Chip away at the lead. It's a long game. Um, we, we know what type of team we are. We know if we lock in and defend that we could cut the lead and come back and get exactly what we want. And um, I feel like when we locked in defensively, we was able to do that. Did you see everyone stay calm? Because we talked earlier in the week about, you know, this is a new experience for a lot of your teammates. Uh, you've been through it, obviously. But did you see everyone stay calm? Or did you have to help calm them down? Oh, uh, yeah. I feel, like, I feel like we all was calm at halftime. We all knew exactly what we had to do to go out there and win that game. And um, I feel like that's what we went out there and did. Our next question is from Maya Peterson from the Daily Kansan. Hi, Marcus. This is Maya Peterson from the Daily Kansan. Wanted to talk to you about the toughness of this team from start to finish of this game. What, did, what does this say about the toughness of the team this year? Well, I, I definitely feel like we're a tough team. We've been through a lot of adversity this year, so I feel like every time adversity hits us, I feel like we're able to bounce back, and that's something that we showed today. With that rough first half, we was able to bounce back in the second half and come out with a win. Next question from Gus Bailo from the University Daily Kansan. Hey, Marcus. I just wanted to talk about uh, – this is Gus Bailo from the University Daily Kansan. Uh, I just wanted to ask about your shot today. It seemed like you could find your way to, you know, get some shots to fall, and it was ultimately big down the stretch. Can you just talk about your shot and, you know, especially from outside the arc? Um, it's some coach – all the coaches kind of tell me every day just to take the shots. If they leave me open, shoot the ball every time I'm opening. That's kind of what I tried to do today, which is be aggressive from beyond the arc. You know, you talked about it earlier, but can you talk about the the performance of the Groves brothers of Eastern Washington? Oh, they was great. Um, they was great. They're definitely a hard guard with the way they were scratching the floor, the way they could drive, the way they was posting. It was definitely a hard matchup for us. And our last question will be from Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Marcus, I wanted to ask you about playing with three fouls. You got that third one late. Um, were you worried at all? Did anybody give you any advice? How did you manage that? Uh, no, nah, I wasn't worried. Um, I kind of know how to play without fouling and without gambling, without reaching, just putting myself in good situations where I don't have to foul. So I kind of wasn't worried at all. Did it, did it affect how you were able to guard or, or do what you do? It didn't look like it. But uh, not, not much, but I kind of feel like it took me off the ball. I couldn't just be aggressive with Probably the, uh, with the ball handler bringing the ball up the court, but overall it, it didn't it didn't mess with me. DeJuan say anything? Like he'd take care of it? Yeah, he told me he got it. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you, Marcus, for your time, and best of luck in the next round. Thank you. We'll be joined momentarily by Coach Bill Self. Please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary.
I got a reprieve till 3.20. I guess we're not muted. See me? Yes, sir. And the moderator will announce uh, who the person is. We will begin with an opening statement from Coach Bill Self and then go to questions. Use the raise hand function to indicate you would like to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation first. Coach Self, please give us a brief opening statement and then we'll go on to questions. Well, obviously, we're just thrilled that we won. Uh, you know, they, they uh, uh, Eastern Washington, they, they outplayed us, uh, you know, for the most part, the first. 30 minutes of the game. Uh, we had our little runs, but they had more. And certainly the, the, the Groves brothers were the two best players in the game in the first half. And, and uh, we didn't guard them. Uh, they had us all messed up with ball screen defense. Uh, uh, we didn't look very good at all. And, and, uh, but somehow or another, we kind of hung in there. And, and then we kind of turned it on the second half. David really played well, considering coming off uh, uh, his, his isolation with COVID. And, and Marcus made shots. Juan was probably the best player we had from start to finish. And and uh, Ochai and, and, and Christian also made some plays. But it, it was a hard game. It was a great game to win in the tournament. It's great to advance. But, uh, uh, but you know, we, we got outplayed for the majority of the game today. They were better than us. And somehow or another, we just kind of hung in there and made some plays at the right time. Now we'll go to questions from the media. Use the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. Our first question will be from Bay Gregorian from the Kansas City Star. Hey, Bill, it's Vahe. Hey, um, congratulations. Thank you. Can, can you just elaborate a little bit on how fitting it is that, or odd it is, I guess, that David did what he did today, coming back from everything? And then I'll have one other follow-up, please. Yeah, I, I don't know that it's, uh, I guess it's fitting. I, I, I don't know. You know, we, we were playing pretty well as a team there at the end of, of the season, and David was playing his best ball. and. I really thought, and our doctors thought that that uh, you know we could get between 15 and 20 minutes out of him today, and I certainly, after the way he started the game, I didn't think that he was going to give us much offensively, uh, except you know, or defensively, just give us five fouls. But he kind of got his legs under him, and and uh, he was really, really good the second half. I mean, really good. Uh, he you know didn't get out to the shooters. Uh, 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 can get out to uh, Groves a couple of times, but he he played great, and so it was good to see. You know, maybe gives me some hope now with Jalen coming back. You know, maybe he can he can provide some key minutes for us on Monday because we'll we'll need we'll need uh, everybody. But but uh, I, it it was good to see. It was pretty impressive how he played and his conditioning, considering all the stuff he's come off of. And and the other thing, Bill, is just you've coached a lot of NCAA tournament games by now. Can you describe the? The, the feeling of being in this for an NCAA game, obviously you had it all season, but but it's a different kind of stage now to have it be this kind of atmosphere, what this arena felt like. Well, it, it, you know, I, I'm looking at the stats here, and i got to put my glasses on to see. It says attendance was 961. I mean, so uh, uh, 900 people coming to an NCAA tournament game. And, and, and granted, I don't think the atmosphere played a, a role in who won or who didn't win. Uh, uh, it just felt different. It was the coldest arena I think I've ever been in starting the game. Uh, uh, I didn't feel it that way at the end. I thought it warmed up some, but I mean, it was literally 60, 58 degrees when the game started, it felt like. And, and, and uh, you know, we've been a team that's been a really hot, hot starting team or a, a, a really cold starting team. And, you know, you get down nine to nothing, and, and now the, the collar gets a little tighter, uh, uh, all these things. And, and fortunately for us, we were in real trouble if it wasn't for Dewan, Dewan came in and kind of sparked us and kind of held it steady for a while. But th this had to make the feeling of a real pressure game. And so uh, it's good to get that one out of our system because hopefully we're going to have a few more of these if, we can t if we're able to play well. Thanks, Bill. Our next question is from Billy Witz from the New York Times. Yeah, Bill, hi, this is Billy Witz from the New York Times. Hey, Billy. What, what sort of handicap do you think uh, 
the COVID issues were today. I mean, whether whether it was you know David or the two guys you missed, you you were missing, and also just kind of what it's what it's been like uh, you know through the last week or so. Well, I I think uh, uh, you know the guys have handled it well, and the guys that 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 that. that uh, uh, contracted uh, COVID, they've handled it well. Their maturity level's been, you know, really high. Uh, you know, it wasn't a woe was me. And, and uh, we've told all our guys we need to play as hard as we can to make sure your teammates get a chance to experience the tournament. So uh, uh, although it didn't really look like that the first half, but I, I think we've handled it pretty well. It, it's, it's uh, you know, we've, we kind of got a motto that we say every year, you know, faces change, expectations do not. And, and, you know, we didn't talk about what we didn't have. We just talked about what we had to, in order to play well and what we had was enough. And, and uh, I'm not sure that it is to go deep in the tournament. We need to have our full complement of guys. But, but certainly uh, it's, it's, it's been – it hasn't been great, but it hasn't probably been as disruptive as what you may think it has because those three guys, they, they were all in Lawrence. They weren't around us, all these things. And so it's – it's, it, it hasn't been a, 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 a glaring distraction uh, at all. And, and, of course, David's attitude coming back was tremendous. And I, and I just follow up, just, I mean, I think you're one of four teams that are, um, you know, dealing with uh, not having a, your a full roster. Mm -hmm. And Josh Passner yesterday just talked about just the anxiety that he's felt of every time, a, you know, every time a test yeah. comes in of, you know, what is, you know, it's going to be positive, negative, what, what's that going to mean? And as a coach has, you know, I guess, have you, have you, and you imagine your, you know, your colleagues that are in a similar position has, has there, I don't know, been like a level of anxiety yeah. that uh, is unusual? Yeah. Oh, there's no question. And, 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 and there has, and, and the, the anxiety occurred from, uh, you know, October, 15th till now I mean it's been a, it's been high anxiety for everybody I mean you know my trainer it is is uh, uh, and my staff as soon as we get our results back from from uh, uh, the test and you know testing three times a week doing the PCR it doesn't matter if it's two o'clock in the morning as soon as we get the the text message from the company uh, giving us the results we all have group text you know and and, and uh you know, here I'm getting texts from the doc and the trainer at 2 a.m. when the results come back, and I'm awake, ready to ready to take the text. So, it 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 has been a high anxiety thing. I you know, and I felt I I feel bad for obviously uh, OU, and I don't know everybody has been affected, and, and obviously for Josh and Georgia Tech because, I mean, these kids work their butts off all year long, and then something outside of their control uh, uh, certainly puts them in a situation where they can't you know live out their dream and and so i feel for everybody i, I uh uh we, we we had a situation where it's been negative for so many teams that had pauses I, you know I, I hate to say this i don't think pauses are good it may be blessings in disguise that that the pauses pauses occurred to, to better ensure you having a a, a a healthy ncaa tournament so uh uh, but yeah, it, it, it's been a pretty stressful year. But it's one—it's one of those things. I don't think that you can dwell on it. It's just whatever happens, happens, and you, you can't change it. So you just kind of got to ride with it. Our next question is from Matt Tate from the Lawrence Journal World. Hey, Coach. One more on Dave. Um, did you notice any particular area of his game or, or what he could give you that, that he was most affected by today? Uh, I thought he scored over his right shoulder. You know, they, they, they took away his left shoulder and, and, and they made him score over his right shoulder. He did a great job with that. Uh, I, I didn't think he moved great defensively at all. Uh, I didn't think, I don't know how many rebounds he ended up with, but I don't think he rebounded the ball. Uh, uh, well, he ended up getting nine, five offensively, so that's pretty good. But I, I, I didn't feel like he looked as good moving, uh, but I thought, I thought, considering all the time off, I thought he looked very patient offensively once we got into the second half. Yeah, and you, you know, you told this team a while ago that you want to get them comfortable playing and, and winning games in the 60s, and then you come out yeah. and throw up 50 in the second half today, and you had to have it. I mean, does there, does there any, is there any confidence that can come from something oh, like I, that? I, you I think, I think, showing you can win any style? I think so. You know, I, I remember, uh, I don't know if uh, we, we played Carolina or somebody in the NCAA tournament, it was like 48 to 48 at halftime or something. 
and our guys were so confident at halftime because they knew that wasn't us. That's not how we play. And so we played their game, and we still were tied. So we now if we play our game, we'd be in good shape. I'm hoping we kind of feel this way now. I'm happy we scored some points, but that's not real. Uh, uh, what's real is we gotta, we got to defend and we got to rebound. And, and uh, if we do those things, we can play with folks. But hopefully this will give some confidence offensively, but also be a reality check. We have to start grinding on the defensive end. Yeah, and last one, can you just talk about Marcus today? He was good everywhere, shot the ball well. I mean, it's what you want from a senior, I'm sure. Well, that's what I want from anybody. But, but, uh, but yeah, Mark was really good today. He uh, 20 and 8 and, and three assists and one turnover, and he played out of foul trouble. So uh, I thought he was great. I thought, I thought he and Juan in the backcourt to, today was probably about as good a twosome as we've had all year long, handling the ball and passing it. And, and everybody else did fine, too. Everybody else did well. But I, it, it was nice to see. Uh, uh, Marcus and Juan shoot the ball like that because we needed them to shoot the ball like that to win. But, you know, sometimes this year we've been playing three against five, uh, or, uh, uh, so to speak, offensively because people dare us to shoot, we don't shoot it. And it's a good shot when their shoulders are square, and it was good that they took those. You, you might have heard him. He said he wasn't worried when he had the three fouls. Were you? Uh, you know, of course he says that now that he didn't foul the, the, <laughs> the rest of the game. But uh, – I, I, I didn't feel great about it, but I thought once we got to about the, the 13 or 14 minute mark of the second half, I felt better because I, I, th I thought he could manage it the rest of the way in. Thanks. Our next question is from Maya Peterson from the University Daily Kansan. Hey coach, Maya Peterson here with two quick questions. First, can you talk about the toughness of this team from January to now and just today's game? Uh, well, I didn't think we played tough, but I thought we were pretty mentally tough. Uh, if that makes sense, I didn't, I didn't think we played tough. We don't, we don't, we don't beat them on the glass like like I thought we could. Uh, uh, obviously, we didn't guard our man. They shoot fifty percent, so I, I don't think we didn't defend the arc great. So I don't think we played tough, but I thought our mental toughness was pretty good considering you get behind like that, and that's when panic could set in, and it didn't. So I, I thought that was a uh, good sign of toughness. All right, and then a follow up question for you, coach. It's been a year since you played your first March Madness game. Was it worth the wait? Uh, well, it's really been two years, uh, you know, because we, we played, I guess, uh, uh, two years ago. And, and no, it wasn't worth the wait. Uh, uh, I don't want to have to do this again, uh, uh, certainly. And there's always a chance it could happen. But we've been so fortunate and blessed around here to, to be in a lot of tournaments in a row. And, and you should never take it for granted. It's a reward for your kids. So. Uh, um, it couldn't happen soon enough, but I just hope like heck it never happens again. Our next question is from Scott Chasen from Kansas247sports.com. Uh, hey, Bill, I'm just curious, did you get a, a read on the symptoms uh, David was dealing with, and, and were they severe at all? Today during the game? Uh, no, no, coming in just from this last week and a half. Oh, no, no, I, 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 I didn't think he... Uh, to my knowledge, he had very little, if any, symptoms. Okay, and, and then what was the acclimation uh, process like in terms of getting him back, figuring out how much he could play, what he could do for you guys? What was that process well, it, like it, yesterday? It, 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 there really wasn't a process. We hooked him up to a hot heart monitor. Uh, we evaluated him during our practice. He probably practiced 70% of the practice. Uh, he looked good. We, we took him out. We sat him, all these things. Uh, uh, we had a pretty good gauge on his fatigue, uh, and and we really didn't plan on playing him that this much today, Scott. But obviously, it worked out this way. Thank you. Our next question is from Sam Mellinger from the Kansas City Star. Hey, Bill. Hey, uh, Sam. Congratulations. Uh, I want to ask you, kind of, just follow up on two things that you just mentioned here. One is uh, David goes over the sort of the, what you had in mind for his minutes going in. What, what was that? Was that just a response to how he was feeling? Yes. Looking on the court? Yeah. It, well, it, was a, it was a response to what, you know, Doc McGee said, Bill, I think he can give you 10 or half. You know, if you, but, but it's a little bit different than the NCAA tournament. I'm sure if you watch it on TV, you don't know, notice this. You could, if you're playing, if you get a timeout, five timeouts in the first half and five timeouts in the second half, it's hard to get tired. You are setting so long, and all the timeouts are a minimum of three minutes. Isn't that right, Chris? Yes. I mean, I mean, so you know, people talk about subbing around timeouts and things like that. I mean, if you can get to a timeout, you're going to be 100% by the time the 
the the the the timeouts over because there's so much rest. So I think I think uh, uh, Sam, if it was a regular season game, I don't think he could have played as many minutes. But but he was the the couple of times he got really fatigued, you know, he's fine after sitting there three minutes. So uh, that probably helped us out a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's interesting. You you also mentioned the. Um mentally tough that the, that there wasn't any panic and that's how it looked at least watching on tv what why is that what, what do you think was in this group or in this game that, that they avoided that uh you know i don't know i think the staff was probably more panicked than the players were but i i, I actually you know uh these guys you know they play at kansas and they play a lot of big games and and we've been behind a lot and we've been ahead a lot and we know that it's a long game and we, and we know no lead is safe or and, 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 and no deficit is too big, you know, if you, and, until you get to at least a certain point in the game. And so, I, I mean, that's something we always dwell. Uh, uh, you know, when we, when we practice, I, I love to practice when we don't make shots. Uh, so that way we, we can learn how to continue to grind and those sorts of things. So I, I think that's as much as anything uh, uh, is the fact that these guys are used to it. It's not, it's not anything that I don't think that we do specifically to, to make them confident in those situations. It's just, you know, been there, done it type attitude with most of these guys. Thank you. Our last question today will be from Benton Smith from the Lawrence Journal World. Hey, Benton. Benton, are you with us? Our last question will be from Gus Balo from the University of Daily Kansas. Hey, Coach. Gus Baylor from the University of Daily Kansan. Um, I know you touched on it a little bit earlier, but can you just talk about the performance of the Groves brothers today? And I'll yeah. ask you one more question after this. Yeah, I, I thought they were fabulous. Uh, uh, I actually thought, watching the game, I, I thought that, the, uh, that you know, it, you, you guys that followed us know that if our big guy has to guard on the perimeter, it's hard for us. And, and they played uh, Tanner on the perimeter uh, far more than what we thought they would. Uh, you know he's 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 made 17 threes on the season and he makes five in 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 uh, in in, uh, in one game and if I'm not mistaken we're three of them are in the first half pretty early so uh, they, that was a strategy by them I'm sure to try to play to that when we had two bigs in the game uh, and then uh, you know I, I thought he was great but you know I actually think his his, his little brother if you can call him that you know to me he's about as good looking a prospect a, a, a around I mean he's six foot eight to nine or whatever and he can shoot and he can post and he got handles and vision uh, uh th those guys were very impressive to me really both really good players they've, they've done a great job recruiting i don't know i don't remember if they're local kids or not but uh pretty impressive what they've done yeah and then you already touched on it earlier but you know the play of marcus today and i asked him also about his shot you know were you confident that he could make you know the shots he did today you know he had 20 points and, you know, was able to get it going from the on the arc. You know, Mark Marcus, you know, he's not pure by any stretch, but he's become streaky. And if you're streaky, that means you're capable of making a few or several in a row. And and he he's done that. Uh, uh, you know, he, he's had games where he didn't, but he's had multiple games, I think, in the last, in our winning streak, if I'm not mistaken, where, you know, he's made a minimum of two a game. So, uh uh, those were all big today, and you could tell that he was feeling it because they, they didn't guard him. They didn't guard he and Juan, and they dared him to shoot, and those guys made him pay today. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Thank you, Coach. Best of luck in the next round. Okay, thanks, guys. That's it for this post-game news conference. The transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with a recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.baritone.com.
now begin with an opening statement from Coach Leggins and then go to questions. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question. Coach, please give us a brief opening statement and then we will go to questions. Um, Got to be proud of my team. Uh, love them to death. They played their hearts out. And they, they, got, they got outplayed in the second half a little bit, but they played their hearts out. They played really hard and you got to give all the, all the credit to Kansas. They came out in offensive rebound and made second chance points and, and made some big shots. I mean, that's a big time program. Um, we went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. We played hard. Um, I told my guys we don't believe in moral victories, but today at the end of the season, this was a great moral victory for our team and our program and our city of Cheney. Um, all our supporters, you know, I'm, I'm proud of our team. You guys should be proud. They gave everything they had tonight, and they just couldn't get the win um, like we wanted to. We wanted to, you know, <laughs> we wanted to get that Cinderella uh, story and keep going, but tonight we, we, we faced a team that was hungry. They got hungry in the second half and did a great job rebounding, so got to give all the guys on Kansas credit, but I love my team, and they play with such, they play with such you know, fun. They, they, they played hard, and they did everything I've asked. They couldn't be more proud of a, of a basketball team. Now we'll go to questions from the media. First, we go to Ryan Collingwood. Please unmute yourself. Go ahead, Ryan. I know Ryan, it's probably muted. Unmute it, Ryan. Okay. All right. Ryan, are you there? All right, we'll come back to you, Ryan. Uh, we'll go to Carter Hill next. Hey, Coach. Uh, Carter Hill with Fifth Quarter. Congratulations on a great season. I'm just curious, you know, for those unfamiliar with your basketball program, what did you think you showed the nation today about Eastern Washington basketball? They were a good team. We could battle with the best of them. Um, that we're a tough team. You know, we shoot a lot of threes, but we're a tough team. We can go inside, we can go outside. Um, we show them it's a, it's a player's program. And our guys came out and played, and we didn't. We, we came up a little short, but you, you can't tell me that we play against Kansas and we shoot 58%, 38% from three. We only missed two free throws and we lose. I think if we had gave me those numbers before the game, I'd have said we won. Um, but, you know, we, we, we showed that, you know, the big sky is no joke. We got some great coaches in our league. We got some great teams in our league and some great players. And uh, whoever comes out of the league is always going to be very tough. And so, you know, I, I really I love this team. And we're, we're, we're a very good basketball team. And, you know, we, we played really hard. And we have a lot of fun doing it together as a team. Next question we'll go to is Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Yes, it's Kevin McCaskill Jr., uh, FP Sports, uh, Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, Coach, what led to the jump in Tanner Groves minutes and points per game from last season to this season? <laughs> He's good at basketball. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, no, he he worked his tail off, and he you know he he's done everything that you know we've asked him and more. You know him and his brother and our whole team. They get in there in the morning, they work out, they go hard, they come back and shoot in the afternoon. They really wanted it, and Tanner was one of those guys, you know that we 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 thought he was really good. I just you know last year as a as a sophomore, he was playing behind the MVP of the league, and it was hard to get a lot of guys minutes. And I you know we we should have figured out how to get him more minutes last year, um, but he he earned every every minute, every second he played this year. Um, great teammate great guy, um, ter a terrific player. And so, you know, I, I tell the guys all the time, if you're better than the guy ahead of you or you're the best player, you'll play. And, and that's, that's what we stuck by all year long. And he's, he's done great. And that's what, that's what really got him, you know, propelled into where he was at. You know, he got, he, he started gaining confidence when you start playing a lot more and, and the results come from you, from the hard work you put in, you know, you start playing with a lot more confidence and it's a confidence game and he felt comfortable and he's done everything, uh, you know, at, at a high level. So you got to be very, very happy for Tanner and his family and his brother because his brother also played really well and so when you have those opportunities um, you got to take him and he, he took his opportunity and and you couldn't be more happier for a player next question will go to John Blanchett uh, Shante uh, going into this game what did you think how were you going to be able to get Tanner loose for, for for so many points I mean it was that essentially part of the game plan you knew that he could go inside and outside against these guys? Yeah, I, I knew that when they play with their big guys, um, they, they, they hard hedge or flat hedge, whatever you want to call it, and they, 
they kind of, uh, we, we got different turns for it, but they snaked the backside. And so we cut the guy through, and we knew Tanner would get a lot of pops. He's a great shooter. Um, so we knew we'd get that. And then when they came in and took one of the big guys out, um, we knew Tanner could take advantage inside um, against a smaller player. We've done it all year long, finding the mismatch. And he, was, he had the mismatch all game. Um, I, I thought Tanner was, was, was one of the best big guys in the country. And he could score with his back to the basket. He could shoot the three. Um, you know, and so we, we thought we, we'd had a mismatch. I know everyone was really excited to, to play this game. And they, you know, they tell you, oh, this, these guys are really good. Post, post this. Uh, I just thought Tanner had the advantage all game long. And we went to him. And you know, it, he came up aces for us. And you couldn't, you couldn't be happier. I mean, he, he did everything we needed him to do tonight. And he put everything on the line tonight, and, and we came up a little short. But we, we, we felt that he had a mismatch, and we felt that we can get him some open shots and some open looks. Next question goes to Brenna Green. Hi, Shante. Uh, Brenna Green, Crumb Two Sports. Um, you know, what do you think it, it means to Tanner to represent Spokane on this stage and also just let the world know? that it's not just Gonzaga in the Inland Northwest that can, that can hoop. <laughs> uh, it means a lot. I mean, he, he, <laughs> he spoke can through and through, you know. Um, you know, he, he, he put everything, like, like I said, he put everything on the line. We, we've been playing, and Gonzaga's been good since I've been, since I've been at Eastern. And it's been one of those deals where you've you got a really good team, and it's like having a pro team in your city. And, you know, we, we just keep chugging along. You know, there's no ego. We don't have any ego. We know they're a good team. Um, it's fun to watch them play. You got, you know, we're rooting for them now. We need them to, you know, win the whole thing for, for all the Spokane guys. Uh, we'll be rooting for them. But, you know, I, I think it means a lot to, to Tanner to be able to play and represent him, himself and his family the way, he's, he, the way he has. You know, he's a, again, he's the MVP of the league. He's a great student. He's a 4.0 student. Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's huge for him. I think it's great for him to be able to, you know, represent his family, represent, you know, Spokane, because that's something I know that's dear to his heart. And um, such to be such a good guy and, and do everything the right way, you know, he, he was a gentle giant until he gets in those courts and we call him Psycho T. You know, it, he's fun to be around. He's a great teammate. Next question goes to Jesse Newell. Hey, Coach. Jesse Newell from the Kansas City Star. I just wondered what you saw from KU's two guards in Dewan Harris and Marcus Garrett. <laughs> They shot better than I thought. <laughs> they made a lot of threes when it mattered. Um, we, we, were, we were going in the game trying to say, hey, we're going to protect the paint, even though we gave up 42 points in the paint. Um, and they, they hit some timely three-point shots, you know, back-breaking three-point shots. I mean, Marcus Garrett's probably one of the best defensive guards in the nation, you know. And so when he puts it on and, and does a good job. And, you know, Harris, number three, is also a very good defensive guard. So they got two guys that can really hound you, bringing the ball up and disrupt your offense. And I thought they did a great job of doing that. And, you know, they made timely shots. And they made shots that, that were huge. And then, obviously, the offensive player, number 30, I don't want to butcher his name, but number 30, he's just, he's just a really, really good basketball player. And so you had three of those guys really working out. And then, you know, when, when they were able to, to get downhill, when, when they were able to, to drive a closeout, they really put us in a bind. And, again, they did a good job. And Coach, Coach did an unbelievable job of putting his players in a place to be successful. And, and that's something that we'll pick up on and, and we'll come back stronger. Next question goes to Brenna Green. Shante, the last uh, few years have been difficult for your athletic department. Just what do you think this means to everybody at Eastern to, to have this game and get some national exposure on your program with, with so many questions that have been circulating? Well, that we're a tough university. Everybody through and through is tough. And it's, it's a spot where, you know, you love going to work every day. Um, you know, it's a spot where you have to figure things out. And, you know, at this time right now, obviously we're going through some tough times, but, you know, tough times only make tough people. And I, I believe our university is going to be stronger for it. We have great support uh, from our six-man club all the way down to, 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 to our boosters and our donors in the EAF. You know, you, you got to be proud uh, to be an Eastern Washington Eagle. And I think people who go through this, uh, Eastern Washington, they, they come out, they're, they're proud of where they go from because they come from, you know, you know, this and that, you know, we don't have this, we don't have that, but we're always great. We have great people in our, in our, in our department. We've got great coaches. We have great student athletes. And it, it just, you just, it, it just is one of those places where 
you're going to have to be tough. You know, you're going to have to to make it work. And I, I believe Eastern Washington deserves a lot of attention because it's a great university. We have great kids on our team, not just our team, but our whole department. And you know, having a having a whole athletic department over a 3.0 GPA, having you know our football team be in the national championship, having our you know soccer team be you know be great. It's just it's a great spot to be in. And then just have great student athletes in, in a small city in a small town like Eastern or Cheney. It's it's one of those things where you. You have to be proud to be from there. And, you know, I think we got a bunch of guys that are proud to play for Eastern. And, you know, I, have, I think there's a lot of people that are proud that they work at Eastern Washington. And there's a lot of alumni that are proud of Eastern Washington, not just, you know, because we've done well, but just because of the people they, they become as they, when, they leave, when they leave our university. They be, I think they're, they're, it's just one of those spots that is special. And, um, you know, we got to cherish it and we got to do everything we can to protect it. And you got to be happy for Eastern Washington. Final question goes to John Blanchett. Uh, Sean Tay, uh, that stretch in the second half where they drew even and then and then moved past you guys, they went to McCormick pretty hard in the post. Anything else in that stretch that you saw that, that hurt you guys? Turnovers and offensive rebounds. You know, I thought we did a good job on McCormick. I thought we, you know, he ended up going 9 of 15 and getting five offensive rebounds. I think the offensive rebounds is where he really scored his points. He made a couple good jump hooks here and there, but I think the offensive rebounds is what really hurt us. Um, and then obviously a couple timely threes by number zero um, really hurt us. Uh, but, you know, and, and it just didn't have enough timeouts. You know, we needed to call a couple more, but we didn't have enough. And I just thought, again, they, we kind of ran out of a little bit of gas, but, you know, I think our team played tough. I think they played hard. You know, we, we, we played Tanner tonight. You know, 32 minutes. You know, we had Michael Meadows play 36. Jacob Gross played 36. And so I think, you know, towards that end of the game, towards that stretch, I could have maybe done a better job of getting some subs and a couple timeouts and trying to get to that media timeout a little bit. Um, but I, I thought, you know, for the most part, we, we did a good job and they just hit some timely threes when we didn't need them to. You know, I, they, they, they haven't been a, a great three-point shooting team all season long, but they were tonight, and that's what, that's what championship that teams do. And, and, you know, that's what Hall of Fame coaches do. They put their players in position to be great, and he did that tonight, and his team came up big. Thank you, Coach, for your time today. Ryan, you couldn't get it done, man. Just call me. Go Eags. We'll be joined momentarily by Tanner Groves. Please use this time to raise or lower your hand as necessary. Thank you. We are now joined by Tanner Groves, who scored a career-high 35 points, and we'll begin the press conference. Please use the raise hand function to indicate you'd like to ask a question, and we are called upon. Please state your name and affiliation first. We will go to uh, Brenna Green first. Tanner, obviously a career high a night for you. It didn't, uh, sorry, Brenna Green from Two Sports. Tanner, obviously a career high uh, for you tonight. Just. Um, you know, obviously you don't get the win, but just how does it feel to ball out on this national stage and, and represent your school and also basketball in Spokane? Oh, man, it's it's honestly so incredible. Um, I'm honestly just so blessed to be here. Um, I got great teammates that were finding me all game, and um, I was knocking shots down. I was feeling good, but, um, you know, we come up short, but that's all right. Um, I was just really happy with the performance that our team, you know, put together today. For the most part, um, you know, uh, we only lost by double digits and, you know, it was a dogfight the entire game. Um, so, I mean, it feels really cool that, you know, we were able to, you know, keep it pretty close here with Kansas and, and make it a game, give them a little bit of a scare. And, and, you know, I played pretty well and that's just all credit to my teammates and coaches, you know. Um, it's just been such a fun season and, you know, I'm, I'm already excited um, for next year. Next question, we go to Dennis Patchen. Please unmute yourself, Dennis. Sorry about that. Uh, Dennis Patchen from KHQ. Tanner, uh, when do you feel good about this season? Um, yeah, I mean, the loss will definitely, you know, sting for a few days, but 
you know, I'm, I'm li- really looking forward to, you know, just getting back home, relaxing, having a little bit of time off and, and uh, just taking a little bit of time to reflect. Um, you know, I think this year, you know, we were projected to be number one seed out of the big sky. Um, and we ended up winning the whole conference, just like we were projected to. And then we came in and, you know, gave one of the better teams in the nation a game until the very end. Um, so, you know, I'm just, I'm just so proud of my teammates and, and uh, coaches and everyone in the program. And, and yeah, I mean, it's definitely going to sting for a little bit, but at the end of the day, you know, you just got to be, you just got to be happy with, um, you know, our effort today. I think, you know, we, we went out there and, and performed pretty well for the most part. And, and we played hard the entire 40 minutes. So you just got to be, you got to be uh, proud about that. Next question, we'll go to Keith. Hi, Keith Oso, KXOY. Uh, Tanner, what are you going to remember about this game, do you think? Will it be, you know, the, the quick start up at half, disappointing at the end? Like, what do you suppose is going to stick out to you? Uh, I, I just think it's going to stick out, like, just how, how hard we played, you know? I mean, I, I touched on it in the last couple of questions, but, you know, like I said, I, I'm just so so proud of our guys. I mean, we, we just played so hard. We battled all game. Um, you know, we tied with a, a much bigger team on the rebounds, which – it's pretty impressive um, if you think about it, and you know I'm just I'm just really happy. You know I'm looking at the stat sheet over here right now and just seeing a whole bunch of things. But but yeah, I mean I think just from this game, it's just going to be how tough we played and how hard we played. And you know I just love all these guys on the team, and I couldn't be more proud to represent Eastern Washington and and be from Spokane and represent Spokane. And you know I just I'm just so proud of. Um, you know, how we played today and, you know, it didn't, didn't go the way that we wanted, obviously, but, um, you know, I'm always just going to remember, you know, this, this team in general this year is, you know, only two other teams in, in Eastern's history have, have done what we, what we did this year. So, I mean, at the end of the day, you just got to be incredibly proud of, of our program, of our program, uh, coaches and players of just, you know, how we performed all season long. Next question, we'll go to Karthik. Hey, Tanner, it's Karthik from Krem2 Sports over in Spokane. Um, I'm sure this is disappointing, and you're not looking too much into the future, uh, but you did mention, you know, looking forward to next year and getting back out on the court. You guys are going to be returning basically, you know, all the key players except for Jack Perry and Jacob Davison next season and likely to be the favorite once again. I mean, you know, how much does that drive you going to the next season and having this experience since the NCAA tournament to, you know, have a shot to do this again next year? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you you actually heard it here first, but uh, you know Jack Jack Perry's he's going to come back for some more next year. Um, I'm really happy about that because he's he's an incredibly heady guard, one of my best friends on the team, one of my roommates, and definitely looking forward to playing another year with that guy. So he'll he'll be back. But but yeah, I mean we're we're returning a, a whole bunch of guys. You know we got a lot of guys, a lot of key players coming back, and you know from what I see, I mean the the ceiling is, is so high for us um it's incredibly high uh we just got it we got a ton of hoopers on the team we got a ton of guys ton of young guys um that are just really incredible you know you only you only saw 17 seconds of a few guys there on the bench like steel venters you know i expect steel to to you know come in next year and and be one of the one of the better scorers in our whole entire league you know i i think we got a ton of guys coaches have done an unbelievable job of recruiting you know for our team this year and and for the guys coming in and you know I, I think we're definitely going to be dangerous next year and I'm really looking forward to next season already you know I, I love basketball so much I love my team so much and you know I just can't wait to get it going again next question goes to John Blanchett uh, Tanner, I know you're oblivious to this kind of thing during the game in the heat of the moment. Are you prepared for all the folk hero stuff that you're going to encounter out on social media now? <laughs> <laughs> you're blowing up. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll have to see. I, you know, I looked at my phone a little bit. I saw all the notifications. And, you know, it's kind of funny, but, you know, um, I've just worked so hard up until this moment um, in my whole basketball career, in my life. Um, and I'm just – I just couldn't be thankful for, you know, the, the people that have pushed me to be there. You know, my, my parents have been so huge and my brother um, and my even my younger brother, he was in the stands today. I was happy to see a whole family. My girlfriend's been awesome. Um, grandparents, everyone, you know, um, it's pretty crazy, pretty surreal that um, I'm getting, you know, a lot of publicity from all this. But, um, 
I, I think I'm just going to continue to be myself and um, continue to, you know, be humble and be proud and, and grateful um, that I that I get to play at such an such an awesome university and get to play for great coaches and play for a great program with, you know, some of my best friends out there. Um, so at the end of the day, yeah, it's pretty cool, but, you know, I'll probably look past it a little bit and, I mean, I'll probably, you know, enjoy it for a little bit, but, you know, at the end of the day, um, I just got to be grateful for what I got. Next question goes to Jesse Newell. Hey, Tanner, Jesse Newell from the Kansas City Star. Um, looked like Coach Bill Self found you after the game. What did he share with you? Yeah, he just said, you know, he just said um, he had a lot of respect for my brother and I said, you know, we, we had a heck of a game. Um, we both did. Um, and, you know, it's it's really cool to get some some crazy recognition like that from, you know, one of the one of the premier coaches in, in the entire NCAA. Um, you know, I didn't really think about it at the time, but because I always usually do that, I always go up to the other coach, you know, even with all the COVID, I'll always go up to him and, and I always got to, you know, show respect to my opponent. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of cool. It's really surreal that, you know, Coach Self, you know, came up to me and said he respected, you know, my, my performance today. And, you know, I, I'm just thankful for, you know, the opportunities that um, we got today. So that was really cool. Next question goes to Kevin McCaskill, Jr. Yes, Kevin McCaskill, Jr., FP Sports out of Springfield, Mass. Uh, what was the most important thing that you did in the off season that led to your, your spike in production this year? Yeah, I think the most important thing was, um, you know, obviously it was it was a COVID year and our uh, postseason tournament got canceled. So I moved back in with my parents. My brother did as well. And, you know, that was probably one of my biggest assets is that I had my brother at home with me. So, you know, I had I had a guy that was really willing to rebound for me and um, willing to, you know, compete with me every day, um, whatever we were doing, shooting, playing one on one, all that. Um, my parents were always out there in the driveway with us rebounding. Um, my little brother, Dylan, he was always out there too, um, which was real cool. But, um, you know, being at home, just the biggest thing for me was um, I just knew that I had to have an edge um, going into the off season, given that um, the player of the year um, of the big sky was playing, playing ahead of me and I had to take his position. So I knew that I had huge shoes to fill and a lot of credit to my man, Mason Peeling, who, you know, had an unbelievable year. Um, 2020, uh, 2019, 2020 year. And uh, so I knew I had a huge uh, shoes to fill. Um, and so, yeah, I just put my head down. I grinded as hard as I could. Um, did all the at-home workouts I could do. I always had a ball in my hand every single day of um, the quarantine. And that was probably the biggest thing was just the ball in my hand. Um, and I just, you know, worked on my skills and did everything I could do. Final question goes to Karthik. Hey, Tanner, uh, this one's a more lighthearted question, but uh, on social media, which I'm sure you haven't gotten much of a chance to look at, people have been comparing you to uh, your look to Bill Walton and uh, Will Ferrell from Semi-Pro. Which <laughs> one of those comparisons do you like more? I like the Will Ferrell one the best because, you know, I've always loved Will Ferrell growing up. Uh, Step Brother is probably one of my favorite movies ever. Um, and, yeah, <laughs> that's that's really funny. But, you know, if you haven't if you haven't looked him up, Look up Lil Dicky too. A lot of people compare me to that guy too. Um, but no, nah, that's yeah, it's all fun and games and yeah, you know, at the end of the day, yeah, it's just basketball is obviously a game, it brings so many people together and um you just gotta love the environment of March Madness and everything and you know it's it's really cool. Um that's that's hilarious though. So I'll I'll have to check that out. But yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you, Tanner, for your time today. Thank Appreciate you guys. <sighs> That's it for the post-game news conference. A transcript of the coach's interview will be provided by ASAP Sports and posted along with the recording of this press conference in the NCAA Digital Media Hub at ncaa.veritone.com. Thank you for joining us.